Alright, so you have seen the title, so I'll spoil the video right away. I recently mass-refactored our production codebase, with no fear at all. And it was a full-stack refactor, which means it involved the apps, the DevOps code, this code, the entire stack. And at the end of the refactor, I did no manual testing of any kind. So how did I do this on a production environment? Well, with the help of automating testing like this, I'm Quantic Dave, and this is my monthly real world engineering stories video. Today, you'll learn about how large refactors are done on live and production code bases. Alright, so let's start with what I did. I did refactor our production code base, and I had no fear of breaking things. And oh boy, did I break things. And why wasn't I fearful of breaking things? Because I knew that I could identify them and fix them. This code animation is from my method chaining video which was partly inspired by the changes that I did to our test framework during this refactor. As I said, I refactored both our infrastructure code and the product related code. The effects of the refactor was far reaching. I probably touched every aspect of the product and the DevOps code itself. These refactors happened over the span of four months and I did zero manual testing. However, for that four months, I was overloading our automated testing infrastructure in a loop. So you're gonna say, what is the product? Why is it so sensitive? Well, it's an enterprise VPN software. It has key hardware integrations, so reliability is super important. I want to leave a little bit of a mystery here because I will do a separate video on what I do in my day-to-day -day work. So why was I so confident in refactoring a live product? It's mostly because I knew that the end-to-end -end tests that I implemented over long years got my back. In addition, I recently created a mobile device farm which is sitting right over there. That mobile device farm extended our end-to-end -end testing coverage from desktops to mobile devices too. I will show a demo of it in a moment, but I want to say that I think automated testing on real devices using device farms is a lot better than manual testing. But before anything, let me explain what is automated testing. Automated testing starts with unit tests. A unit test is a micro test that tests a small section of your code. There are great libraries for it, like NUnit, JUnit, Mocha, etc. And it is followed by integration tests. An integration test, as the name gives it away, tests the integration of your software components. And on top of the mountain lives end-to-end -end testing, which is also referred to as acceptance testing. There are also great and reliable tools for it, like Appium, Selenium, etc. And I'm going to explain them more in a moment. And if you want to see it, I have a separate dedicated video on how software companies test their products. In that video, I explain how every single testing strategy is employed by software companies. Now we talked about the software side of things. Let's talk about the hardware side of things, device farms and test labs. Now this is the fun part because you get to play with real devices. Obviously, you don't want to be playing with them indefinitely. You want to automate that process. And to be able to do that, for our products, I implemented a device farm. In essence, a device farm starts with a device management software. And for that purpose, I used Appium, which uses Selenium's web driver protocol for all clients, including desktop and mobile clients. And it can automate virtual machines, emulators, and real devices too. And as you can see in the photo, I have Appium installed on a host machine and all the other devices are connected to it. Well, let's watch it in action. As you can see, I have both Android and iOS devices connected to a single MacBook. I connected most of them through a USB hub. It's a little messy, but it has been working great. When someone triggers an automated test run, one of the devices are selected in random for the given platform. Then the entire test suite runs on that device and the test results are collected. There is quite a bit of room for improvement, but this, along with our similar setup for desktop computers, enabled me to make extensive changes to our sensitive production code base with utmost confidence. It's not only us that utilize device farms. As you can see in the photo, Facebook has their own implementation, and it is probably several thousand times bigger than ours. Not to mention the fact that cloud service providers like Google and Amazon provide their own device farm implementations as a product, so you can use them to test your own mobile apps or websites. And again, I want to do a separate video on device farms detailing how they are implemented. If you want to see it when it's out, don't forget to sub. 
As a bonus in my device farm implementation, I enabled people to RDP into the host machine and control the mobile phones manually if they ever need to do that. There are also some software that enable you to control your phones without the RDP and through a browser. Well, in conclusion, real device testing using device farms is essential for sensitive products. I highly recommend it if you want to ensure optimum quality, especially for mobile apps. Having a great test automation in place is not only useful for ensuring software quality, but it will also give you confidence when you want to refactor your software in the future. If you depend on manual testing today for your apps, I highly recommend trying to switch to some form of automated testing for them. You don't really have to implement all of these things that I implemented. You can just buy these device farm services from cloud hosting providers. If you have any recommendations of device farm providers, let me know in the comment section below so I can go ahead and evaluate them in my device farm video. Well, that is it for now. I promised more real-world engineering stories, so here we are. If you like it, give me a like so I'll do more of these videos. And I'll see you on the next one.